What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2021 Subaru Forester, courtesy of Apple Subaru in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, as I am sitting at this red light, wanted to check this Subaru Forester out today because several changes actually for the 2021 model year. Of course, excellent resale value, really with any Subaru in general for that matter. Great reliability, you could check out a Consumer Reports magazine to see that, specifically the Forester has amazing reliability. And of course with Subarus, you have the very best all wheel drive system in existence and that has been proven. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are actually several different trim levels for the 2021 Forester. First one being the base setup starting at $24,795 premium for $27,795, sport for $29,395, limited for $31,395, and lastly, the touring starting at $34,895. But I will say, regardless of trim level that you go with, power plant on the Forester is going to be the same. Powering this beast is going to be a 2.5 liter direct injected, horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine, putting out 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 160 76 pound feet of torque available at 4400 rpm power sent to all four wheels of course through a linear tronic cvt with paddle shifters actually if you go with the sport trim level and up that's how you're going to get them and we will be testing those out in a little bit here but do want to also mention with that sport trim level and up though you also will get a seven speed manual mode for the cvt if you were to go with those specific trim levels so that's kind of interesting so we'll give that a shot of course as well so like i said we will be giving that a shot i'll let you know how that manual mode actually feels but zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 8.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 26 in the city 33 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so before we test out anything in the forester i did want to mention there are actually some driving modes that do come standard on this one as well they will include sport and intelligent those two buttons are going to be located on the right side of the steering wheel steering wheel mounted controls there essentially what they will do is adjust things like the shift points and the throttle response as well so let's go ahead and push sport and it did immediately downshift for me so it is going to hold the rpms in a much higher level giving you more power on demand so that's going to be useful for merging onto the highway things like that and then you could just hit the i intelligent mode and that'll put it back to its normal driving mode essentially but having now set all of that like i was mentioning there is a seven speed manual mode here so what we are going to do is push the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is going to give me that manual mode right now it is telling me i am in that seventh gear so it is going to display Play the gears within the digital portion of the gauge is right in front of you there so having said all that let's just go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's test out the paddle shifters keep in mind this is a cvt or continuously variable transmission so there's not really gears to shift through but we are going to see how well it actually simulates that shifting in the end so let's go ahead and give it a shot there we go didn't shift nice huh that's kind of good. It really simulates a regular automatic transmission quite well. Like it was winding out the RPMs and it did not shift for me. So it really is a true manual mode. That's pretty cool. I like the Subaru did that, giving the driver a little more control. So I like it. Anyways, let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test here. I think I found my spot in three, two, one. Yeah. Well, there's that CVT. <laughs> It's not bad. It's definitely not the quickest thing in the world. If you want quick, go with the Subaru WRX or something like that, but eh, it's all right. It's just all right. We'll say that. I wouldn't have minded if the Subaru Forester came with maybe a turbocharged engine, perhaps, maybe with a nice little hood scoop feeding air into the top mount intercooler. Something like that would be pretty freaking sweet on a Forester, but nonetheless, because you have this engine, you are going to get better fuel economy and, of course, better reliability than a turbocharged engine as well, but not the quickest thing in the world. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration test, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front disc. In the back, 11.2 inch solid rear disc. And actually for the sport trim level and up, that gets bumped up a little bit to 12.4 inch ventilated front disc. So almost a full inch larger in the front 
when you go with that sport trim level and up at least in the back still 11.2 inch solid rear disc for those trims but all in all when it comes to the 60 to zero stopping distance that's going to come in at 129 feet for the Forester. but that's with the regular brake setup if you were to go with that upsize brake setup it actually then comes in at 118 feet which is very respectable for that one tiguan comes in at 131 honda hrv comes in at 116 so it's kind of right in the middle of the pack unless you go with that larger brake setup with the sport trim level and up and then you really get some very good braking and i will attest to that absolutely no issues with the braking feel in my short test drive today whatsoever so i'm definitely a fan there touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back double wishbone type rear suspension once again with the stabilizer bar but perhaps what impressed me the most right off the bat i could instantly tell with the forester is the steering feel it's wonderful it's absolutely wonderful it's definitely on the weightier side of things so therefore it instantly points you in the direction that you want to go typically with suvs you're going to find a lot of loosey-goosey steering feels which definitely isn't my favorite so with the forester it almost feels more along the lines of a sports car so the steering feel is absolutely wonderful on the forester i will say that when it comes to ride quality it's pretty much as expected i mean we got a lot of road imperfections in pa so i've been hitting a lot of them but it's as expected it's certainly not the smoothest drive but it's not the worst either so it's pretty much on par for the course i guess you could say then touching on cabin noise that's perfectly fine as well i get a little bit of engine noise when you really hit the gas but other than that the forester is actually pretty well insulated i will say that i was at highway speeds for quite a bit and not a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin again it's just that engine noise when you really hit the gas that's not necessarily a bad thing in my opinion i actually enjoy that but touching on visibility this is really where the forester really shines absolutely amazing visibility of course that's due to its shape being a little more boxier in nature but you can see wonderfully out the back so when it comes to visibility the Forester is certainly on point but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Subaru Forester all right so here she is you guys the new 2021 Subaru Forester this is the limited trim by the way finished in crystal black silica for anybody who is curious but let's go ahead and start up front now of the Forester I wanted to mention ground clearance because Subaru tends to do this pretty well 8.7 inches of ground clearance up front there that's definitely more than most other competitors in its class typically it's coming around typically that comes in at around eight inches but Subaru Forester puts it at around 8.7 so that's definitely pretty nice LED steering responsive headlights is now newly standard for the 2021 Forester it's one of the new things this year essentially what that means is when you're going around a bend at night those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or really anything else led fog lights coming with the premium trim level and up led daytime running lights coming with all trims of course red trim detail can be found on the sport trim level only and that's going to be found near the front lip the side skirts and the rear bumper a little sportier appearance i guess you could say also with that sport trim level you're going to get gloss black front grille surrounds as opposed to the chrome that you are currently looking at right now on the limited and of course that's going to come with the touring as well that chrome grill surrounds and the extra detail around the fog lights down below there but anyways that pretty much wraps up the front timeless look to the forester here let's go ahead and make our way now to this side of the forester and so let me go ahead and start up top raised roof rails coming standard with the premium trim level and up also rear privacy glass for the premium trim level and up meaning that base trim level does not actually get the rear privacy glass is something that people typically ask on my reviews of the Forester in previous years so I wanted to mention that taking a look at the side mirrors power adjustable black side mirrors coming with the base trim body colored side mirrors coming with the premium sport and limited you will find a satin chrome finish to those side mirrors then if you were to go with the touring so that's going to differ amongst the trim levels there and you're also actually going to get integrated turret signals if you go with the sport trim level and up as well then take a look down at the bottom when it comes to the side skirts they are going to differ amongst the trim levels as well you're going to find some red trim if you were to go with the sport there's going to be some satin chrome trim with the touring otherwise you're going to find that matte black trim at the bottom which is currently what you're looking at right now of course then take a look at the wheel setup 17 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the base trim 17 by 7 inch aluminum alloys with the premium and 18 by 7 inch alloys if you were to go with the sport limited or touring like you were looking at right now but now 
let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. And so now since we are round back, you will find a shark fin antenna up top there, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light for all trims. Just below that rear window wiper, C-shaped LED taillights coming standard across the board. Gotta love that, a little better illumination at night there. And then just below it all, you are going to find a single exhaust outlet finished with a chrome tip. Definitely looks good back there actually. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back of the Forester, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is going to be a power lift gate only if you go with the limited touring or it's going to be optional on the premium and the sport. But you will get a manual lift gate that is going to be the standard setup again, unless you go with the limited or the touring there. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 28.9 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down. There is a 60-40 split, bumping that up to 70.9 cubic feet. And it was relatively easy to fold those rear seats down. There's actually a little knob found on the corners on the top portion of those rear seats. You just lift up on that and then push the seats down. That's pretty easy there. But also found in that cargo area, actually, I wanted to mention grocery bag hooks. There's also cargo tie-down anchors back there. You will also get in-floor storage on every single trim level. That doesn't always Always come standard on SUV so I didn't want to mention that removable cargo area tray coming with the sport trim level and up and you will also find a cargo area rear gate light for the sport trim level and up as well back there so overall pretty much everything you could possibly want in a cargo area of a vehicle so anyways making our way now to the rear leg room that comes in at 39.4 inches so for reference I mean even six feet tall this is how much space I had back there do you want to also mention those rear seats if you go with the premium trim level and up at least they are reclining meaning if you wanted to lay back a little bit they do recline backwards or you can move them up a little bit as well if you wanted to heated rear seats actually come with the touring trim level I wanted to mention that if you want to spoil your rear passengers a little bit fold down rear armrest with cup holders coming with the premium trim level and up you will actually get dual rear USB charging ports for the sport trim level and up and I did want to also mention you will get front seat back map pockets there's kind of two different sections to them as well you almost never see that so it's a cool little design feature I like that Subaru added that but now let's go ahead now and make our way to the front seats they are manually adjustable cloth seats with the base trim level power adjustable front seats for the premium trim level and up you will find heated front seats again for the premium trim level and up and that button's located just behind the shifter by the way sport cloth with orange stitching for the sport trim level leather seating then is going to come with the limited and touring and it is a perforated leather by the way as well I wanted to mention that overall very comfortable seat definitely didn't have any issues in my short test drive today so I do like the seats on the Forester here then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the premium premium trim level and up and it will be heated if you were to go with the touring and by the way that heated feature is an option on the limited trim level that we have today it's actually located on the right side of the steering wheel but we do have that option so it is pretty cool that it's heated especially on cold days in Pennsylvania unlike today but it's going to get cold I know it is but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do essentially have all of your buttons on one side of the key lock unlock and the button to pop the rear hatch and by the way the unlock button is going to be the Subaru logo located in the middle of the key there in case anybody was curious but it is all going to be a push button start if you were to go with the premium trim level and up so we do have that today so all I'm going to do here simply put my phone on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so, but then upon startup, those gauges will do a full sweep. Tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right, and there is a small digital display front and center, giving you basic information like how many miles you have left until you hit empty, your average miles per gallon at any given time, what driving mode you're in, and like I was saying earlier, what gear you were in if you were to choose to put it in that manual mode here on the Forester. But essentially, it is a pretty basic gauge setup. I think it probably would have been cool to add a full digital gear 
gauge cluster and maybe the upper trim levels of the Forester, but it gets the job done either way. But taking a look at overall interior quality, panoramic power moonroof coming with the premium trim level and up. This I love. You almost never find a panoramic power moonroof on that many trim levels of a vehicle. So the fact that Subaru puts it on the premium trim level and up, of course, that's pretty darn cool because you usually don't find that. So I wanted to mention that. Overhead LED map lights coming standard on all trim levels. That's pretty nice as opposed to the halogens. You will also have an overhead sunglass holder up here as well. Dual zone climate control is going to come with the limited and touring trim levels only. Home light controls is going to be optional on all trim levels. It doesn't come standard on any particular trim level though. Just in front of the shifter, you're gonna have an auxiliary port, two USB charging ports, and a 12 volt power outlet. There's a little bit of storage just behind that as well. Behind the shifter, you're gonna have an electromechanical parking brake, and in the middle of it all is going to be that X mode dial. And so essentially what X mode is on the Forester, it uses enhanced control of the VDC system, along with increasing all wheel drive system engagement to give you better traction in bad weather for example when it snows here in pennsylvania that is definitely a mode you're going to want to utilize but there's specific modes within x mode actually there's the normal mode which is what you leave it in for regular driving that's when you just press down on the dial there but if you turn it to the left you're going to have snow and dirt if you turn it to the right you're going to have deep snow and mud so did want to mention that X mode is going to be there for you on the Forester as well, and it's going to be a very useful feature when it starts to snow. And of course, you got the best all wheel drive system, anyways, in the Forester. So essentially, everything is going to be perfectly fine when you hit those conditions. But just behind that dial, you're going to have two cup holders just behind that, a little bit of storage. And within the center armrest, of course, even more storage along with the 12 volt power outlet in there as well. Overall, when it comes to interior quality of the Forester, it's pretty much as expected. I actually kind of like it. There's some rubberized finishes on the doors as well as just above the passenger side glove box. That's pretty cool. Little bit of plastic finish above the glove box as well, but I will say I do like the design of that. And again, overall, it's pretty much finished as you would expect the Forester to be finished. So no issues there for me. But now let's make our way to the tech display. There's actually two tech screens I wanted to mention. And let me start with the top one. To control what is on that upper tech screen, there's actually an info button on the left side of the steering wheel. And it's one of those things where you're probably not gonna know how to control what is on that screen unless somebody tells you. So it is labeled info. And so when you press that, you can view things like your outside temperature, what day of the week it is, the date as well. Also, your safety information is going to be up there. There's some off-road status, oil temperature, weather information. There's a compass up there, radio information. The list goes on, but really a good bit of information can be found on the upper tech screen of the Forester. But just below that is really where everything else is found. And that's going to be a 6.5 inch color touchscreen display for the base, premium, and sport. Otherwise, if you go with the limited or touring, that's bumped up to an eight inch color touchscreen display, which is currently what you guys are looking at right now. Bluetooth and audio streaming come standard either. Either way, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for every single trim level, by the way, even the base Forester, you still get Android Auto with Apple CarPlay, and that means if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Forester, and therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that text screen, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. There's a couple other compatible apps as well. Factory navigation system is going to come with the touring trim level only. Really, you only need that if you perhaps go under a lot of tunnels or if you live in the mountains or something like that. Of course, you can check out your radio information up on that screen as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems of the Forester, it will differ substantially amongst the trim levels. Four speakers coming with the bass, six speakers coming with the premium, sport, and limited, and you will find a nine speaker Harman Kardon sound system. If you were to go with the touring, that sound system is optional on the limited that we have today. And we do have that, by the way, that's why I mentioned it. So, and by the way, that sound system comes with 576 watts. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Definitely a ton of bass with a Harman Kardon sound system, I will say that. And conveniently, it was very easy to adjust the amount of bass, the mid-range speakers and all that. There's actually a sound button located just below the radio settings there. It was very easy to find, so I was able to actually turn up that bass a little bit and make it even better. So loved it, it was that simple to adjust that as well. But sound system is great if you were to go with the Harman Kardon, I will say that. So 
definitely pretty nice. But the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Forester in reverse, of course, you will find a rear view camera coming standard for all trim levels across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, starting with safety, I wanted to mention the Forester is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is, by the way, the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that's always pretty much the best start you could possibly get. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system. Also, those Subaru EyeSight coming standard on every single trim level of the Forester. This is going to include a pre-collision braking system, pre-collision throttle management, lane departure and sway warning, and adaptive cruise control with lane centering as well. And by the way, that adaptive cruise control system, you can adjust that using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel there. But the list actually continues from that. Sport trim level and up is going to add to that automatic high beams as well as a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And that's gonna be the little Subaru logo in the side mirrors, letting you know if somebody is in your blind spot, of course. Touring trim level and up then is also going to add reverse automatic braking, which is gonna be optional on the limited, by the way. So I did wanna mention that as well. But ultimately, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2021 Forester, excellent when it comes to safety and Subaru always takes a lot of pride in their safety readings and really overall safety in all of their vehicles. I've seen interviews with those Subaru executives really taking pride in that so that's pretty cool. Love the addition of the adaptive LED headlights across the board that's super nice especially at night. Best all-wheel drive system in existence of course. Really good steering feel on this one as well that is one thing that really surprised me when I started driving this so that's pretty cool. Of course you have excellent resale value it's pretty much a Subaru thing as well. As far as room for improvement goes on this one, like I was mentioning to you guys earlier, it is somewhat slow. Wouldn't have minded a turbocharged engine. It would be super cool if they actually dropped the WRX engine in here and then put a top mount intercooler with a hood scoop. That would be pretty darn sweet. And of course, CVT transmissions aren't always my favorite, but having said that, I do like that they put the seven speed manual mode on there, but how often do people really use those paddle shifters anyway so i don't know how often it's going to be used but i do like that it is there and of course you can use that for engine braking in the snow as well if you wanted to but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold